them to Woodville on our drawing. I'd like to thank the Forgetting Sisterhood Bond from Cookbridge. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to ask Dora Harry Howard Hanning to make a speech. Thank you, Brother George. And can I say it's a privilege and pleasure for both the Grand Master and myself to be here this afternoon on the Woodfield Road uh, for this uh, weekly part of the protest. The Grand Master and I are here to show solidarity and support for the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland for the Legal Aid Lodges who have shamefully been, been denied their basic human rights for now approaching a thousand days. We are constantly mindful of the long-standing and ongoing plight of our brethren in Drumcree, who due to similar intransigence have found themselves in a similar scenario since 1998. And brethren, can I say that every Sunday morning, the brethren in Portadown walk from Drumcree Church down to the bridge. So their protest is going, brethren, 18 years, so that tells how long this fight may take. As the Grand Master said at this platform last year, why can the three lodges not complete their 12th parade in a safe and dignified manner? Along which is a main arterial route, the Cromlin Road to Liganil. And indeed, today, our Prime Minister is somewhere in County Antrim. I presume we're in County Antrim here, Brother George. We are indeed. Why doesn't he come to this part of County Antrim and stop in front of the shops and see the arterial route that 364 days of the year everybody can use, but yet on that one day the brethren cannot get home? Today as an institution we pose three questions. Where is the supposed shared future? And I suppose we could add shared space. Where's the fresh start we hear about emulating from Stormont? And what evidence is there of the so-called New York, Northern Ireland, a place for everyone, including the, Northern Ar or the loyal orders in Northern Ireland and throughout our jurisdictions? It's certainly not here in North Belfast, and this very protest is a public manifestation of the genuine concerns of the Orange fraternity, as we seek to protect and preserve our proud culture heritage and traditions. With this in mind, the Grand Lodge will be seeking as soon as possible a meeting with the Secretary of State, Theresa Villers, to register yet again our discontentment with thus this unacceptable situation. Now as George said, Theresa has been busy pushing a new campaign for the EU, but she needs to push a yes campaign for the brethren here to get back up that road. Having previously pulled the rug under agreement for creating power at the behest of Sinn Féin and after failing to deliver on promised draft parading legislation, what has transpired from the Northern Ireland office has been pitiful. Not one piece of paper, nor one word, or even suggestion how we can move forward. It is, it is clear the Secretary of State simply doesn't care about British rights for British citizens. That rather, she has handed our veto over cultural expression to nationalism. The, insp the inspired response of the Secretary of State to the transience and tragedies of others over parades comes as our community continues to be traumatized, traumatized by Republicans. The Grand Master and I, as George has said, have just come from the UDR2 Memorial Parade in the center of Belfast. And can I agree with George, it was a massive turnout today in the centre of Belfast as that now approaches almost 30 years from those two members of Her Majesty's forces were brutally murdered in that part. And indeed tomorrow uh, Grand Lodge officers will be in the Memorial Hall in the city of London Derry to once again unveil another memorial to those that paid the supreme, supreme sacrifice and protecting freedom in this province. Just this very week to hear of the comic book paid for by the Arts Council telling the story and trying to rewrite history on the Republican terrorist Bobby Sands. Shame on those who have authorised public money to be spent on a twisted and glorification of a Republican. 
Almost daily we hear or see those who bombed, murdered and maimed who are now in government trying to rewrite history. They tell us they were innocent. They were downtrodden minority. They were only victims. Everything that generates bad publicity was carried out and manipulated by the Crown forces. And I think as we, George has mentioned the Easter Rebellion, I think that's the next thing that probably try to bring the Brits for was the Easter Re Rebellion in 19, or 1916. We have a day, today have a message for the Republican movement. We are not allow the memory of two members of the Crown forces, the memories of others, to be sullied by your pathetic comic books. We don't fall for your wicked lies and further traumatize innocent victims, nor your constant attacks on our culture. But that be ongoing attacks on our Orange Hall, or the deliberate opposition to parades along main arterial routes. Folks, as this year is a special year for the people of this province, as we think of the song, um, just today and over this last week, we have launched the Orange Lilies into our province. And we trust and pray that come the 1st of July, that orange lilies are spread right across our jurisdiction to make sure the song is remembered. Those who have sustained and kept their peaceful protest going are the front of that battle. We stand once again for the demonization of the orange tradition and to ensure the restoration of our rights as British citizens. Grand Lodge commends you and the entire institution encourages you and appreciates, appreciates your relentless commitment to the cause. I can assure you we're working on many levels to do the best we can to support you. God willing, our labours and yours will not be in vain. Let them home, brother. The National Anthem on the 18th of 